is the end of an era in Japanese monetary policy. The last holdout for negative interest rates has finally abandoned the policy as the Bank of Japan takes steps to unwind its massive monetary support to the economy. On a 7-2 majority vote, the Bank of Japan has lifted its short-term rate for the first time in 17 years, setting it in a range of 0 to 0.1 percent. Now, the BOJ also eliminated its yield curve control policy, where it sets a hard ceiling on bond purchases. It will also start to curb its risk asset purchases, discontinuing its purchases of ETFs and REITs. The bank said it anticipates maintaining accommodative financial conditions for the time being. Policymakers will continue their bond buying program in broadly the same amount as before. Now, one of the main drivers of the policy decision today is the strong pay increases in the early results of the spring wage talks. The BOJ has been aiming for a positive cycle of rising inflation and wages before it triggers a policy pivot. The development reflects the Bank of Japan's growing confidence that this is now in motion in the Japanese economy. And CNA's Michio Ishida joins us live now from our Singapore studio. Michio, it's great to have you with us. Now, the end of an era, indeed, for our Bank of Japan as its unconventional monetary tools. Economists had been expecting policymakers to wait uh, until at least April. Tell us more about the tipping point that may have prompted this shift. Hi, Sha. Well, thank you for having me. Now, the immediate impact of the shift is expected to be minimal. But it's a historic move after 17 years of ultra-loose policy. Rumors were strong since the end of last year that the BOJ would likely revise its monetary policy. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has constantly called for 2% inflation target to be met. 2% has been sustained. Mr. Kishida has been constantly calling for a wage hike. Last week, after the spring labor negotiation, big companies agreed to raise wages by more than 5%. This is the highest since 1991, when Japan's economy was booming. That's impacted the decision-making. And also good for Mr. Kishida. Media polls suggested his cabinet's approval rating dipped to the lowest since uh, he took office in 2022. And the state of the Japanese economy, well, the October to December quarter GDP was revised up last Monday from the contraction of 0.4% to growth, meaning Japan was not in a recession. You know, Michio, this is quite a feat for Governor Kazuo Ueda, um, considering that some economists had doubted that he would be able to unwind the massive stimulus program within a year of taking office. So what's his next challenge? Well, the aim of the easy monetary policy was to um, keep borrowing costs low, and this would help businesses, individuals, thus the economy. But it was not good for banks. There are views the BOJ will take matters slowly. Consumption is not so strong. We have to wait and see if wage hikes will reflect on consumption. Now, Kazuo Ueda took over the reins from Haruhiko Kuroda a year ago. Before him, governors hailed from the finance ministry. He's the first academic. Analysts who were on BOJ board told me that he's pragmatic and would eventually move away from Mr. Kuroda's shadow. Uh, Mr. Kuroda followed Abenomics, uh, the three arrows, a quantitative easy monetary policy, fiscal expansion, and structural reform. In the Japanese yen, it has been the worst performing major currency against the dollar this year. And the jury is still out on just how much of a boost higher interest rates would bring to the yen over time. Uh, but how could a stronger yen impact Japanese households? Well, you know, it really depends on to what extent the yen may strengthen. Uh, but the weekend has been discouraging people from spending, especially as prices of imported materials, food were high. Uh, Japan's self-sufficiency is low uh, with limited natural resources. Uh, the Japanese have been discouraged from uh, traveling overseas. The recovery of outbound tourism is still half of 2019 level. And on top of the weekend, inflation rate in many countries is higher than in Japan. But on the other hand, the weekend has strengthened inbound tourism. Number of foreign tourists reached pre-COVID-19 levels even without the influx of Chinese tourists. Some cities complain of over-tourism and they may like to see less foreign tourists. For one, Japan lacks hospitality workers to accommodate so many with its aging population. Michio, thank you so much for speaking with us. Michio Ishida there from our Singapore studio.